This is a type of variable capacitor and they are used in many crystal radios and in fact a lot of other uh, ordinary radios. And as we are building our kits, there's all that's left of these are a stockpile probably from the 1960s, maybe as late as the 70s. But they have been sitting in warehouses. They have been getting dirty. Uh, I noticed that this one actually has some metal particles in between the plates that I probably could wash out of there. And in fact, I've got one over here that I did just that with. But this one is also damaged. Listen carefully. It's okay here. Hear that grinding? Yeah, multiple plates on this one are touching. Uh, I have tried to fix them in the past. Never, never had any luck. If you have one plate that's out of whack, say that's near one of these gaps and you can bend it out slightly, okay, you might get away with it. But this one has multiple points of damage. This plate right there, it's one of the uh, static plates has been damaged real seriously here and it's no longer flat. Getting a tool in there to try to flatten it is, I don't know, I, I've never been able to do it. There's probably somebody out there who can do it, not me. But this one has multiple points of failure. Now, it's not just listening to it. There's another way of testing it, obviously. Some people are sitting there saying, just just use a, a ohm meter. And yeah, we can do that. We'll hook up our ohm meter. And we'll hook it up to the rear gang first. And then we'll turn it. Oh, and we don't hear a sound from our ohm meter. I've got it set to beep in a case of a short. So let's hook it up to the front gang. And, oh yeah. As soon as you hear that sound, the beep comes on. So this one is badly shorted. Now you say, well, you could use the back backside. Well, yeah, I could. Uh, but what I was hoping to do was join these two together and get a something close to a 360 picofarad capacitor, which is one of the common values for, for these uh, crystal radios that use these things. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, a couple of different things can happen. You can have mechanical damage. Uh, if there's just dirt between the plates, or I've had one that had a little bit of corrosion, and you can slip something in there and uh, remove the corrosion without damaging the plates or bending the plates, that's okay. Uh, if you can clean it out with, say, dry alcohol, good. But once you start getting the uh, multiple plate damage, you're pretty much done. Uh, again, I've never been able to do it. I've been trying since... I was a little kid, and uh, 60 years ago, not not been able to do it. They were precision-made tools, uh, instruments rather, and yeah, it's just uh, it's just not not going to happen. So when you go out to buy these things, make sure that if you don't have an ohm meter on you, at least listen carefully to the sound they're making. If they grind, you may get a little noise out of the bearings. That's not too bad. You can usually regrease those. But, uh, yeah, this one, I'm afraid, is gone. Okay, well, that was it. Just kind of a public service announcement for people who want to build their own radios and are looking for this uh, air variable type of capacitor.